So today we are out in our agriculture, conservation, education, demonstration site, ACE site for short, where we had our first cover crop field day about one month ago. The cover crop is doing really well. It's loving all this summer heat. Uh, just like the crops, regular field crops, it could use a rain. We've got a really impressive stand of buckwheat. There's a lot of sunflowers blooming millet, clover, Austrian winter peas, and other brassicas. There's some Ethiopian cabbage that's really impressive right now. Uh, some of the winter crops aren't doing so hot. The cereal rye and the winter oats, they're not doing very well in the summer heat, but after the first frost, those are really gonna start to thrive, and then next spring, we'll see a flush of green activity once we have some of the first warm days. Um, what we're really trying to do is just do demonstrations to the public. That's the purpose of the cover crop field day. Uh, it's open to the public at any time. Dawn till dusk, you're free to come here and take a look. We're installing interpretive signage and different brochure holders that are waterproof. So you can take those as you please and just do a self-guided tour. Um, but as far as, you know, real farming we're not we're not doing any of that we don't have corn we don't have soybeans it's just purely for demonstration purposes uh, there's really a lot of wildlife out here so there's a lot of pollinators uh, we've seen some butterfly activity the monarchs really enjoyed the buckwheat while it was in bloom uh, we've seen some birds feeding on the millet and the black oil seed sunflower so if you're a bird watcher come here uh, while you still can, while, they're, while everything's still in bloom, and take a look at those. Um, we've still got some good days ahead of us as far as growth goes, but without rain, things are kind of going dormant. But then once the first frost comes, the winter annuals are going to be suppressed. And then the more cold tolerant crops like the winter pea, the radishes, the rye, and the oats, those are really going to start to flourish. So come by anytime, check out the ACE site, and if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or check out our website and our other forms of social media. Here we have a cover crop, which is called sun hemp. Um, as the name suggests, it is also in the hemp family. Um, it doesn't produce the same substances. Uh, it's not medicinal. It will not cure your glaucoma, uh, but what it will do for the soil is it is a super producer of nitrogen uh, so everything you see above ground here I mean this is some mega biomass it has a really really woody stem on it so we're sequestering carbon building biomass and feeding the soil at the same time uh, like I said it is a legume and that's, that's really the biggest benefit you're gonna get out of sun hemp. It does mature really fast. So from planting like 60 to 90 days, it's gonna be mature and that's what we see here. So right here we have what's referred to as Ethiopian cabbage. Um, it is in the brassica family. It doesn't really look like cabbage, but when you get down in here and look at the characteristics of the plant, it is in the brassica family. So what that means is the root system on this is going to be where you get the most benefit. It's not fixing nitrogen. You are building biomass, but with the brassica, you have a long tap root that goes down below ground, so that's going to help break up compaction layers within the soil. So down here, also next to the cabbage, is Austrian winter pea. So these are legume, which legumes fix nitrogen. Uh, they're not doing so hot right now in this hot summer heat. This one's completely burnt up. But what they are is a really good companion crop like with rye because they will climb with the rye. You see here the legs that they use. They'll grow these little wiry uh, hands really is what I would refer to them as. But they're just, they will latch onto the rye and grow upward. Uh, they do have a bit of a tap root. Um, but the biggest benefit is the nitrogen fixation from them. What we have here is a radish 
tillage radish, nitro radish um, are terms often thrown around in the cover crop industry. You can get different species. Um, these are just run of the mill tillage radishes. Um, and this is a really good specimen. It's got excellent upright leafing. And a lot of them, they'll sprout on the surface and kind of bend off to the side. But I don't have a shovel with me. If we were to dig this one out, it's probably about six to eight inches long. Um, so those are going to aerate the soil. And they also have another tap root, just like a lot of these species do. Um, so that's, that's going to help with soil compaction. But one of the benefits that isn't talked, out, talked about a lot is that these are sort of a host plant to different arachnids. So arachnids being spiders, and I'm not talking the big spiders you find in your house and kill with shoes. These are small, tiny spiders that are beneficial. Beneficial meaning that they're predators to a lot of the insects that are harmful to different field crops. So before corn or soybeans, these are an excellent cover crop to plant because the spiders will go after some of the insects that harm harm corn. So our corn borer, different aphids, um, they're predators. So it's like I said, it's a host plant for spiders and it's also a great tool to break up soil compaction. So two benefits to radish. Uh, they're also edible. They're a little more palatable after they're frozen, so after you have a freeze, but they are edible. There's lots of recipes on the internet.